Welcome to assignment two. So this is a fun one. We're going to be using some data from a measured drag race, a, a LIDAR data that measures the distance to analyze the race. I won't go over everything over the whole problem in detail. Hopefully you've given this a try already. So I'll try to be a bit more to the point. So uh, one thing we have to do is we're going to have to use this formula here. That the velocity at a specific time is given by the difference between the distance traveled close to that time divided by the difference in time. So MATLAB has a neat function to take these differences. It's called diff. So if you click on this, it will take you to the documentation, which you should read. I'm just going to do a demo on how to solve this. So here goes, we're going to start on task one, create a column vector vel with the approximate velocity of the dragster for each moment in time. Tip, use the function diff and the form is above. Note that they will have one less element. Okay, let's get to it. So, uh, first thing we should do is we try to figure out how diff works. You should hopefully read the documentation, but let's just do a quick demo, shall we? So, if we take a vector v, that's the vector 1 to 10, what happens if we take the diff of v? What will we get then? Let's run the code and find out. Run script. So the v, the vector v is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. Diff, I guess, is very boring. You just got 1, 1, 1, 1. What I did, it took 2 minus 1 and put the answer here. And then it took 3 minus 2 and put the answer here. And so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. Up until it, up until it got to 10 minus 9 and then it put the answer here. But they, it couldn't give it a number for the 10th element. There's only 9 elements here. It couldn't because to do that it would need the 11th element there. So the, when you use diff on a vector, like so, of 10 elements, it always gives you a vector that's one element shorter. It's just the way it has to be. So, um, okay. So if we skipped by three values, and run that again quickly before we solve the exercise, what do we get? Hopefully I've remembered the syntax correctly. So now I want 1, 4, 7, 10, 13. When I apply diff, let's get 4 minus 1, 3. 7 minus 4, 3. Okay, it's always 3. Hopefully you got the idea. Right. So how are now are we going to do exercise task 1? Task 1 says to create the, the column vector v, the velocity. So we know that the velocity let's say the velocity for a time maybe 10 is going to equal something like the distance at 10 minus the distance at 9 divided by the difference in time. So we do have a whole vector for time. We could get the distance, the time at 10 minus the time at 9. But because the question says that time is always changing by the same amount, we can just divide by dt. So that would give us not the velocity at 10, the velocity at 9. Now, if you think about this carefully, you could do this for any integer, any number here, n. This would be n plus 1, and this would be n. So the nth position in this vector equal, is related to the, position, the nth position in this vector, but plus 1. So if you think about it carefully, what you're going to realize is that you can define something maybe called dx, which I'm going to maybe call this thing dx, is just the diff of the distance traveled. So what is the distance traveled? Well, if we read the data table, we will see it's this. So how do we read the data table? Well, it's already showing us actually that we can access drag race data dot distance and it's done a plot as a little hint that it's easy to access the distance here so this is it this gives us dx and then v the vel the whole vector vel is going to be dx divided by dt and if you want to you can then check you'll see that if i get the tenth element here and I get the tenth element here minus, let's say, I think the ninth, divide that by dt, 
these two things should be the same. So let's put a semicolon after this vector here because we don't want to see this print out. You could do a plot of it. In fact, you should do a plot. But this, I want to see these two values here, see if they're the same. Okay, they're not the same. There's a slight difference. So, it's because it's 9. Got that wrong again. I did that setup before. It's 9. Hopefully. Let's see. There you go. Exactly the same. Okay, so that's just checking that you understand that each element here is calculated like this. All right? So it always helps to do a plot. So let's just do the plot to help visualize. Shall we do a hold on plot to compare it with the distance traveled? Yeah, let's. So if we write hold on, this will appear on the same plot, won't it? Yeah, let's just do run script. I think that's an exercise for later, actually. Yes, it is. So we won't go into the detail right now. So blue is the distance. You can see that as the distance increase, it starts to increase faster, the velocity is increasing. And at some point, the distance starts to decrease slower. That's because the velocity drops. It looks right. OK, do we have a, um, a pretest for that? So remember, you, can press the, you should press the pretest as many times as possible. Press pretest. And you have to press pretest immediately before you press submit to make sure that you've not introduced an error in the code. Ha! OK, that's fine. We haven't defined the, <laughs> the, the vector Excel yet, so it's OK that we got that wrong and we got vel correct. So that's good. That's the one we wanted to get correct. All right, let's move on to the next task. Um, create a column vector acceleration. Um, that's the approximate acceleration of the dragster for each moment in time. It's exactly the same deal as the previous one. OK, so I'm just going to go through that quickly. So what I'm going to do is if we think of u, the symbol u or v as the velocity, then dv is just the diff of vel. Same thing as before. And then exactly the same rationale that relates acceleration to velocity is the same way that velocity is related to distance. We just take dv dot dt. OK? So let's do a run pretest. Yep, they have the same length, and this is correct. We haven't defined these next variables yet, so it's okay that these didn't work out. So we've not defined these yet. Okay, so now uh, finally for this mini clip, they're going to use the plot. We're going to plot both those things together. So it's, I gave a link showing you how to plot things on the same axis, but I'm just going to... Um, do that for you now then. So here goes. So we're going to first do hold off. We could try that below. We're going to need hold off. We want to plot the We want a y-axis to go left to begin with for the velocity. Then I'm going to do hold on. So I want to keep the plot in place while I plot something else on top of it. And for the next plot, I want to use the y-axis on the right. And that will be acceleration. And usually it's a good idea to do hold off there. So um, what about labels? Shall we label something? So we've got this plot up here that shows us how to do some labels. Let's use the labels here. So let's label the velocity. Velocity axis. Is it meters per second? I'm not sure, actually. Um, seconds. Yeah, I think so. Distance traveled. Uh, 
I'm not sure I've mentioned it. <laughs> so the x-axis is time, the y is velocity. And then what about for this new y label? Is this going to work? Let's see if we can write acceleration. Acceleration, and that's meters per second squared. OK, let's run that script. All right, look at that, perfect. So you got the black line for velocity, and it says that on the left, and the, the yellow line for acceleration. You can see that as the velocity was increasing, the acceleration was positive. Here's acceleration zero. So it was positive when the velocity was increasing. When the velocity starts to drop, the acceleration goes below zero. So something I want you to notice is that the acceleration looks very noisy, doesn't it? It doesn't look, I, the vehicle surely didn't change acceleration that rapidly, did it? Up and down, up and down, so rapidly over what, two seconds. What that is, is that whenever you differentiate data the way we just did, it becomes noisier and noisier. That's actually a fundamental theorem in maths that says that. And uh, you have to live with this when you are dealing with data that's from distance measurements. So LIDAR has to be very accurate not to lead to these kind of errors. Okay, that sums up the first three tasks. I'll see you back for the next tasks.